pray over us. Amen. Into your hands, um, Pastor Ferguson. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, let me honor Christ, who is my life, and to Prophetess Kelly and the prayer team and everyone in their uh, respected places. Let me honor each and every one of you. Uh, the word that we're going to share with you on tonight, on Sunday night, I, I think about three o'clock in the morning, I heard the Holy Spirit say, because of the experience you're going to have, you can trust me with the outcome. So let me say that again, because uh, God already knows the experience that you're going to have. So many are going through so many things, but we can trust him with the outcome. And I want you to see yourself trusting God. I want you to see yourself putting your trust in him because he already knows your expected end. So tonight, it is about faith building, uh, the building of your individual faith. Uh, take what you are experiencing now and place it at the altar of the Lord. And so wherever you are, create you an altar, the altar in your heart. Take what you are experiencing and I want you to place it there and I want you to trust God because he already knows the expected end. As he said to the prophet Isaiah, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. He also says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you for a good and expect it in. So I begin to ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me in examples in the Word of God. And so this Word, it covers all of us. I'm not going to say all of you, but it covers all of us. It's going to cover those who already have accepted and you have heard the call, whether you are an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, an evangelist, or a teacher. It is going to cover those who already know their ministry gifts, and it is going to cover those who have been rejected, neglected, those who have been hurt. And the enemy has said unto you, this is it. But I came by to tell you, if you would trust God with the experience, he knows the outcome. What you're going through right now is not necessarily for you, but it is for a testimony. It is so that someone else can get a breakthrough. It is so that someone else can receive a healing because you have already experienced him and now you have the knowledge of what he can do. And so I want to talk to the warrior. I want to talk to the spiritual warrior. You have a mandate on your life to intercede and to go into spiritual warfare. And I know that on the onset of your assignment, you are saying, God, you want me to do what and you want me to go where? And he's saying, listen, I, I, I got something that I want you to do. I want you to go into this territory uh, and I want you to speak a word and I want you to pray a certain prayer. And the flesh is apprehensive. But there is somebody there waiting on that word that is in your belly. That is the outcome. The outcome is that someone is waiting on an answer and they are waiting for deliverance. And the word that is in your belly, warrior, is a part of the outcome. So let us take a look over at Judges. And I want to take a look at Gideon. Here, there were certain people in the Bible that God gave them an assignment and he also told them the outcome. Whenever God gives you an assignment, there is an outcome. And so this word is for the warrior. Judges chapter 6. And I want to take a look at the 11th verse. It says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abzerite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee. That is first and foremost. You must know up front that yes, the Lord is with you. You are not alone. Where you are about to go, listen, you are not alone. God is with you. The word of God is in you and the Holy Spirit reigns in you and he is going to reveal unto you what God wants you to do. You are not alone. It says, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. That is why I am talking to the warrior. There were certain ones who have been called to the forefront to war in the spirit for God. You are the forefront. Listen, I'm talking to some generals on the line tonight and you know who you are. You are a general in the spirit and God has great need of you. Verse 13 says, And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen upon us? Doesn't that sound like us? Lord, if you're with me, why am I going through this? We question him and we say, Lord, if you are with us, why is so much hell breaking out upon the earth? If you are with us, then what is going on with the mind of the believer? Well, I want to tell you that what is going on with the mind of the unbeliever is that they are waiting on the truth. And so listen, you must gird your loins and prepare for the assignment that you are about to go to. See, you have to experience some things so that you can minister properly. You had to go through some come things on. because you had to come unto spiritual maturity in order to handle that assignment in which God wants you to go to. So you had to go through some things. The experience that you had to go through is because it, it takes maturity to minister to that particular audience. He can't send a weakling and he can't send an unexperienced individual into that territory. So the experience you had to go through is for that particular audience and Gideon said unto him oh my lord if the lord be with us why then is all this befallen us and where be all his miracles which our father told us of saying see your experience brought you into knowledge Without the experience, you had no knowledge of his goodness and his mercy. Without the experience that you went through, you had no knowledge of a breakthrough. Without the experience, you had no knowledge of a healing. And so the experience that you went through was for a purpose. Did not the Lord bring us from up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Listen, it was an experience. You had to go through the valley. You had to go through the storm. It was an experience. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And so I say to you, warrior, I say to you, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, I say to you that what is in your belly is meant to deliver those that are in another land. The other land that they are in is deceit. They are in unbelief. They are in a place of lack of faith. They are in a place of deception. So, warrior, yes. warrior, what is in you? He says, have I not sent thee? And so your experience has an outcome. Do you see how he lined that up? He told him, listen, Gideon expressed his experience. And God said, I know your experience. But through your experience, mighty valor, mighty warrior, mighty woman of God, it is in you. The Lord thy God, he is with you. Fear not and go and do what God has called you to do. Now I want to take a look at another individual. I want to look at Abram. I want to look at Abram over in Genesis, the 15th chapter, because whenever God gives us an assignment, there is something connected to it. Genesis 15, and I want to go over to the 13th verse. God tells Abram about an experience of his seed 
that he will have. And he also gave him an outcome. Genesis 15 and 13 says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. So here's an experience that will occur with the seed of Abram. Verse 14 says, And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great abundance. That is the outcome. I know that you are going through something right now, seed of Abraham. I know you're going through something and you do not understand what you're about to go through. And you're going through some valleys and you're going through some lows. And it seems as if your back is up against the wall. But remember, I told you, I want you to see yourself putting your trust in God. If you can see yourself putting your trust in God, listen, I want you to take it. It is like a plate. You got a plate in front of you and there is a lot on that plate. I don't need you to take anything off the plate. I need you to take the entire plate and I need you to place it on the altar because he says right here he says and also that nation whom they shall serve so those who thought that they had rule over you those the enemy who thought that he had you in bondage the enemy who thought because i closed this door listen he didn't close it he might have hindered it he's just standing in the way but god has a ram in the bush he has to move and god will judge him he says, afterward shall they come out with what great abundance. So you're going through a lack right now, but fear not. Fear not. You shall come out with a great abundance as you place your trust in him. This is about faith building, faith building. So you shall come out with great abundance, great abundance. My God is good. Now I want to take a look at the brokenhearted. I want to take a look at the brokenhearted and I want to take a look at the, the rejected and the neglected because you did what was required of you. You listen, somebody asked you to do something and you did it. And after you did it, you did it from the heart. You did it even, re, re, you didn't even want to do it reluctantly, but you were obedient. And after you were obedient, guess what? They rejected you. So let me take a look over at Haggai. I want to look at uh, Hagar over in Genesis 16. And I want to look at the very first verse. This is a point of where uh, this woman, she's, listen, she's under her, her, her mistress's rule. She has to do what is asked of her. You have done what was asked of you on your job, in your home, and even in some ministries. You have submitted and you have been obedient. And when you were obedient, you were neglected. You were rejected and you were cast aside. But listen, it was an experience because God knows the outcome. Let's take a look at this word. It says, now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Now there was some friction. You know how it is. Sometimes we do get in our flesh. And we say, look what I have done. And so listen, there was some chaos and there was a misunderstanding. And when I get to the fourth verse, it says that he went in unto Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abram, my wrong be on thee, upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleadeth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Listen, I didn't want to submit to do what you asked me to do, but I did it out of obedience. And you neglected me and you rejected me and you pushed me away. 
And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way of Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence comest thou? And whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under, that, under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. So, you had to experience it. You had to experience it. You had to experience the rejection. You had to experience the neglect. They turned their back on you. You were faithful. But you know why you had to go through that? So that you will know how to treat others when you come into leadership. So you have to know how to stand. You have to know how to follow the will of God. You have to know how not to step in the way and let God do it his way. God had told Abram he was going to bless him with the seed. He didn't say anything to Sarai, not at that time. The promise wasn't unto her. And sometimes we get in the way, but learn from it, grow from it. And listen, you had to experience, you had to experience it because God knew the outcome. Look at the outcome for this woman. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, unto her, behold, thou art with child. So you're pregnant right now. You're pregnant right now with purpose. You're pregnant with purpose. You're pregnant with ministry. You're pregnant with business ideas. There is work for you to do when you are pregnant and you need to be under watchful care. And so you cannot be out there wandering all around uncovered. And so until God tells you to move from your covering, I need you to submit yourself. Sit and be quiet. Sit and pray. But don't move until God tells you to move. Hagar had to stay there until she gave birth. Let me tell you something. She had to go back and stay until she gave, until it was time to give birth. And then at an appointed time, then she could leave. Oh, God is so good. And so as we continue to go over after the birth, now Isaac is on the scene. Over in Genesis, the 21st chapter. Now the promise is on the scene. But that does not mean that God has neglected you because remember, you were able to conceive. You were able to conceive and you will bring forth that which he placed in your womb. Although Ishmael was not conceived properly according to the way God wanted it be, to be done, that does not mean that God's hand was not going to be on him. God's hand is on you as well. And so I don't care what mistake you may have made. I'm talking to the brokenhearted. I'm talking to the neglected. I'm talking to the rejected. I'm talking to you. God's hand is still on you. Yeah. His hand is still there. He has not moved his hand away from you. He is going to bless that's what in your womb. He's going to bless your household. He's going to bless that what he gave you. He's going to bless the business. Listen, you did what you did. You were obedient. And I feel in my spirit to say this. Yes, you connected with someone to birth their business. Oh God, God, you're so good. You connected with somebody to birth something for them. That, listen. But what you birth, God is going to bless. You connected with somebody to birth something on their behalf. And then once you conceived, when God began to allow it to grow in your belly, they got jealous. And then they wanted to neglect you and push you away. But God wanted you to experience that. You shall be blessed. You shall not be neglected. God is going to continue to cover you. Over in Genesis 21.10. It says, wherefore, she said unto Abram, cast out this bondwoman and her son. Isn't that just like the flesh? 
I know you helped me get this up and get it started, but now that it has been birthed, now that it has opened up, now that it has started, I don't need you no more. Isn't that just like the enemy? To cat to want to cast us aside. Listen, I know, I know, I just uh, used you. I had really no longevity uh, for you to begin with. I just needed you for this purpose, and now that it has birthed, now that the seed of promise has come through uh, Sarai, she no longer needs Hagar, so she doesn't want her there. That has happened to some of us, and you're saying I helped you. I was there with you from the beginning when you didn't have any ideas, when you didn't have the finances, when you didn't have the, the, the people to connect you with. I connected you. I put my name out there for you. I put up the finances. And now that it is open, now that it has been birthed, now you don't need me and you want to push me out. But God is good. In the 13th verse, God finds her. And he says to her, let me back up to the 11th. And, it, and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman and all that Sarai hath said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Because see, that was the promise. But you had something in your womb too. He has blessed you with spiritual gifts as well. You are gifted. You are talented. He knew you from the beginning. Before you were in your mother's womb, he had already ordained who you were going to be. He already knew the outcome of your life. Verse 13 says, and also of the son of the bondwoman, will I make a nation because he is thy seed. See, listen, they can't take anything from you. They can't take anything from you. Come it's on. in you. It's in you. It's in you. They thought they stole something from you, but you were there to experience that. You were a part of their outcome. One day they'll get it. But today I want you to remove the burden. Remove it from you. I want the pain to be removed from you. I want it to be removed from you. You were there for a purpose. You served your purpose. Now God has greater things for you. And in my closing, I want to take you over to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is one of my favorite people to study in the word of God. And in the beginning of his call, God told him of his outcome. Jeremiah, the first chapter and the 17th verse through the 19th says, and I'm talking to my prophets. Thou therefore gird up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land, and they shall fight against thee. Listen, you have a job to do, and the enemy does not want it to come to pass. The enemy wants to throw a stumbling block and hindrance your way. But I want you to begin to thank God for the open doors that he has set in advance for you to go to tear down walls, to minister the word of God prophet, to tell what has been in the past and the present and what is to come. Listen, they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. That is your outcome. And he he showed himself strong and mighty when they put the man in a pit over in Jeremiah 38. They put him in a pit because he spoke the truth, because he would not bow, he would not bend, but he gave them what God told him to give them. And they put him in a pit, but the outcome 
was set at the beginning. Remember, he said, I will be with thee and I will deliver thee. They shall not prevail against thee. But when I get over to the 38th chapter of Jeremiah and I see where they put him down in a pit, they put him down there to die. No water, no food. They put him down there to die. But there was one Abimelech. He went forth out of the king's house and he spoke to the king saying, my lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet whom they have cast into the dungeon and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is for there is no more bread in the city then the king commanded Abimelech the Ethiopian saying take from thence 30 men with thee and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die you shall not die Glory to complete God. your assignment Go in the power and the authority of God. Get clarity on your assignment. Get the timing correct. Get the word correct. And go in the boldness and the authority of the Lord. They shall not prevail against you. You shall speak and you shall say what thus says the Lord. So that you can move to your next. And that is our word for tonight. I pray that you have been blessed. I pray that your faith has been shifted, not down, but up. Yes. Build your faith. Glory to God. Because God already knew what you were going to experience, you can trust him with your end. Back into the hands of Prophetess oh. Melissa. Oh my God, we thank God for the word of God, woman of God, listen. The anointing is all over you. I cannot I cannot step into this. We gotta let you flow. We gotta let you flow. I need you to go ahead and pray. I Jesus. want you to pray over or pray over the warrior, the spiritual warrior, the faith Jesus. building. I want you to pray over the hack out of rejected, Jesus. neglected, the, the um the one that were obedient that has been pushed away and broken hearted. I want you to pray over the prophet. I want you to release the sound of heaven. I want you to pray over us, woman of God. The anointing is on your life. Go ahead, into your hands. Jesus, Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up your servants today, name by name and one by one. Every apostle, yes, every prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, those who operate in the spiritual gifts, those who are broken, those who have been neglected, those who have been rejected, in the name of Jesus, spiritual warriors, Put on the whole armor of God tonight in the name of Jesus. It is the hour of obedience in the name of Jesus. It is the hour of obedience that you will go and do what God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. Your experience, I pray over your experience. I pray that the shame of your experience be removed. I pray that the sting of your experience no longer hurts. It is for a testimony. It is for a stepping stone. It is for deliverance. It is for healing in the name of Jesus. God is with with you woman of God in the name of Jesus God is with you be not delayed be not denied in the name of Jesus you have done what God has called you to do in the name of Jesus you have lined yourself up I see you woman of God you have lined yourself up to do what God has called you to do and you have been looking for an out but I want to tell you right now that God already knows the outcome and so pace yourself I want you to prepare because the out is about to come the out is about to come oh. in the name of Jesus you have to be ready to go it is preparation time it is the hour of obedience and so God is going to give you your out in the name of Jesus I don't want you to rush it I don't want you to delay it I don't want you to be denied I don't want you to be sidetracked but I want you to begin to pray and I want you to begin to prepare in the spiritual realm I want you to begin to pack and get your stuff together there are some material that you you have already put together and you have already assembled what God put in your spirit listen you weren't supposed to share it all you aren't supposed to share everything that God gave you and I want you to be careful about what you share from this point on woman of God I just want you to share what God told you to share because everything that is in your belly is a part of your necks yes, 
It is the hour of obedience. I pray for your faith. I pray for the building of your faith. You've cried. But now your tears are going to turn into joy. You were hurt. You were mishandled. You were misused. They thought they got something over on you. They thought that they were taking something from you. But it was what you were supposed to give. When it was released from you, it was actually a birthing. And so you birth what you were supposed to birth in that season. But there is yet an outcome. It is not over. You are not at your end. That was not... Somebody is feeling, I gave my all. You Listen, there is more that God wants to do in your life. That was not the end of you in that last assignment. They didn't take it all. There is more that God wants you to deliver in the name of Jesus. Your faith is building right now. I feel the level of your faith growing in the knowledge of God. Your faith is growing right now. I want you to begin to lift your hands up in the presence of the Lord right now. And I just want you to begin to surrender all right now. As you begin to place everything that is on your plate at the altar. Your faith is being elevated right now in the name of Jesus. I feel a shout coming on in the presence of the Lord. I don't know who it is, but somebody right now is running around in a room. Somebody has just released in the name of Jesus. Somebody's faith is elevated in the presence of the Lord and you have released in abundance. The more you release and give God thanks and praise, your outcome It is so very near. It is so very near. Your outcome is there. The enemy can't stand in the way anymore. The more you begin to praise and bless the Lord, listen, the enemy has got to move out of the way. Your faith has been erected. It is high. It is high. And you got to keep it there. Don't let it come down. Don't let it come down for nothing. But leave your faith at an elevated status. And the only way you can do that is by staying in the presence of the Lord. The only way that you can do that is, is listening to him and giving him thanks. Your faith has got to elevate in this season. Elevate your faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is the hour of obedience. It is the hour of obedience. Those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And I pray for those who are struggling in your faith. I pray for you right now. You're seeking truth. I pray that the revelation of the Holy Spirit will hit you in days to come. That that which you have been reading over and over and over again, and you just have not been able to understand it. I pray a release of the Holy Spirit right now, that he will reveal unto you that which you are reading. And when the you're going to feel, uh, uh, it's going to be a shift in your spirit. When you receive that revelation in your spirit, when it hits you, and you get an understanding of what you have been reading over in the book of John, it is going to shift your faith. And so whomever has been studying and reading over in the book of John, and you just don't understand it, but the Holy Spirit is going to reveal it unto you. And when that knowledge hits your spirit, it is going to shift your faith. It is going to renew your mind and you will be drawn unto Christ by the Holy Spirit. Let that will be done tonight, Lord God. I speak a blessing over your people. You know what they need and you know where they are. You know all about them, Lord God. And there is nothing too hard for you. There is nothing that you cannot do. You already know the outcome. And so we put our trust totally in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I am unmuting everybody.
Hallelujah. So we can give God the praise. Come on, open up your mouth and give God the praise. Come on and say hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah. Jesus, Oh God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory. Oh Lord, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Jesus. I just want to say to the woman of God tonight, Lord, thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you, when she shared with me that she had a word for the people, that was here, is what she said. And I believe tonight, we, our hearts were touched, our hearts were pierced. I, I saw myself so much, and um, there were some points in my life, some things that I was even contemplating on just walking away from. And I just thank God for the word, Pastor yeah. Ferguson, God used you tonight. Did God not use the woman of God tonight? Amen. So, you know, and you got out in, in good time. It's just 946. So we just thank God for the woman of God. I love this woman. I thank God Jesus. for her. She's been with us since day one. She often comes on and delivers a word, and it always is a word that is Rhema, a seasoned word, a word that is uplifting, an edifying word. And so I just pray that you uh, feast tonight. You take it with you. You took note. I pray that you took note. I mean, all of us could have seen ourselves. Hey, you, uh, you, uh, you warrior. You, you prophet. Uh, listen, the, the spirit of Abraham, the one that has the faith building. Haggai, the one that's been rejected, neglected. The one that's been pushed away, broken hearted. Come on here. Come on. The Lord met us tonight, and we just so grateful to God for his Thank vessel you, that he used for tonight. Amen. Thank you, and see, Lord. Amen. this is why I had to say, okay, God, I hear you. Let the woman of God, let the woman of God go. Let the woman of God come on through. Amen. 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 So we love y'all tonight. We thank God for each and every one of you on the line. We thank you for coming in and tuning in. We pray that you all were blessed. And we just want to say, God be the glory for the pastor God, the who brought the word tonight. We pray over you, woman of God, that God will restore everything that you poured out. There will be no backlash, no retaliation of the atmosphere. We pray right now a double portion of the anointing shall fall on your head. We pray right now that everywhere your foot shall travel shall be blessed. Everything you put your hands on shall be blessed. Raise your hand, Dr. Ferguson. Raise your hand right now. Lift your hands, your whole family. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God, more than enough. I pray overflow, increase. I pray more revelation, more knowledge. Father, I pray that her cup overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, that what she has birthed tonight. We Jesus. see the blood. We thank you, yeah. Father God. I yeah. she walk in the spirit tonight. And she met us in our place of need, yeah. in our weak place, yeah. in our lonely place, yeah. in our hard place, yeah. in our broken yeah. place. We thank you, God, for the woman of God tonight. We pray for her children. Jesus. We pray for her husband yeah. yeah. the way. We pray for her finances. Jesus. We pray Jesus. for her ministry, yeah. her school of ministry, her television Jesus. ministry. Jesus. Every day she yeah. puts her hands to yeah. every Jesus. desire in her heart. Yeah. We pray that it will yeah. come forth. In the name yeah, of Jesus name Christ, of Jesus. God, have in your way in the world of God's life. Greater is here, and greater shall continue to come in your life, Dr. Ferguson. And my check on time, no weapon born against you, will it be able to prosper Jesus, or produce? Jesus, 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 Jesus,